we are doing a watercolor demonstration. I'm going to be using this long, thin scrap piece of our Moulin de Roy watercolor paper. So it is a cotton rag watercolor paper. I've sketched on it with a blue mechanical pencil. I actually have that right here. And then I'm gonna be painting this with some beautiful Da Vinci watercolors. You guys have seen me use these in a few videos. So this isn't a field test, this is just a demonstration. And I've already got a couple of watercolor pencils out. I'm sure I will be grabbing more. But what I really wanna to demonstrate today is painting foliage and using blue to cool things down and to kind of push them into the background. So I hope you guys are excited to get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a toning wash of phthalo blue. And that's actually one of the reasons why I selected this particular set for today's demonstration is they have a beautiful phthalo blue. So what we want is just kind of a light wash. And this color can get really intense. So I'm actually gonna grab a different brush, a fluffier brush, a squirrel quill. And I've also got some paper towels right here to do a little bit of blotting. And I went ahead and I taped this illustration down onto a spare piece of chipboard that I've scavenged from the back of one of my watercolor pads. And I taped this down with blue painter's tape. And this is really just to keep it, hopefully from buckling too much as we work. I'm actually going to go ahead and even paint on her face. And then we're going to use our paper towel to just blot up a little bit of the excess. Then we're gonna use our paper towel and create a thirsty brush. And we're just going to absorb some of this excess paint. Use the same quill. I'm just going to go in and lightly shade her face just a little bit so that it actually looks like she's in the shadows. So I want it to look like she's hiding in these leaves and that the light is catching just a little bit. Also going to use the same paper towel and I'm just gonna dab up some of the color on some of these leaves. And those are gonna be the leaves that are more in the foreground. I'm mostly going to focus on the leaves that are closest to her. So I'm gonna go back and I'm actually going to reapply my blue wash since this is still wet. Soak up that excess. Okay, so now we have sort of our lightest parts right now pointing in towards her face. All right, so this isn't fully dry. It is however dry enough. I went ahead and I got a clean cup of water. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up her skin tone. And this particular Da Vinci set has a really nice burnt sienna that can be used as a very convenient skin tone. I was thinking it would be nice, since the rest of this image is gonna be kinda of cool, if I went with some warmer tones. So I was thinking about giving her nice kind of golden hair and golden skin. So we're gonna go a little bit darker than normal, than I normally paint, this, I mean, Yes, we're gonna go a little darker than I normally paint for her skin tone. And off camera, I have a little swatch of the same paper so I can test what I'm mixing. And before I get too invested in doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of the phthalo blue I'm just gonna tighten up these shadows. And I'm painting the shadows with the phthalo blue green or the phthalo blue, because these are the sort of shadows that foliage would cast, sort of desaturated cool shadows. 
And sometimes it's easiest to paint them as an underglaze than to try and glaze them on top. All right, I'm gonna give that a chance to dry and then we're gonna do our first layer of skin tone. So for her eyes, I want something that's going to be bright and kind of stand out. So I'm actually going to start with a bright yellow. Then drop a little bit of that phthalo blue and let them kind of mix on the paper surface. I'm also going to start with our first layer of skin tone. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let her eyes dry before I paint her face. All right, so her eyes have dried. I'm gonna probably go and do a few more layers on those as we progress. But it gives me a chance to finish painting her skin tone. I'm also going to go ahead and add another layer to the skin that's in shadow. I think I wanna do another layer of blue to that as well so I can kind of push it further back into the background. All right, so since her skin has had a chance to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer with the phthalo blue, just to kind of push the shadowy part a little bit more into the background. Also going to add a little bit more up here, just to create a little bit more striking shadows. All right, I'm gonna try doing another layer on the eyes since it dried a little bit muted. And I'm leaving just a little rim unpainted. And when I'm dotting in the color, I'm pretty much just doing it at the top and then kind of slowly working it down. That way I'm not adding too much color. I'm gonna use a little bit of more intense blue here underneath her neck. And then also on the ears. Now often I would blend out this sort of shading, but I do want it to look like we're getting some direct sun. So I'm gonna leave this side unblended and I'm only gonna soften this side and I'm using a thirsty brush to do that. And I'm actually gonna want her skin tone to be a bit darker and a bit richer. So I'm gonna grab some more burnt sienna and some more Van Dyke Brown and mix it a little darker. But before I apply that layer, I'm going to wanna go ahead and do whatever blush I'm going to paint on her. And I may even want to start doing her hair. Now I'd mentioned doing kind of a golden color and I was kind of thinking we could do kind of like a warm brown for her skin and then kind of a rich gold for her hair. And that way um, it'll contrast because I want to get really dark with the area behind the foliage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of Da Vinci yellow and I'm only going to paint that where the sun would hit it. So I'm gonna avoid that area for now because it's still damp. I'm gonna let that dry and go ahead and mix up the yellow ochre with Hansy Yellow Deep that I'm gonna actually use to paint her hair. 
something I really like about these Da Vinci watercolors is that they activate fast and you get good pigmentation from them without damaging your brush. That's a problem I'd had with the Windsor New Half Pans is that they'll chew up my nicer brushes. So while that yellow dries, I'm actually going to grab a Lizarin Crimson. And initially I'd chosen blue for my sketch because I knew it would complement the colors I plan on using. It's gonna cool everything down a lot, make everything seem cool and shady, which is sort of the feeling I had in mind for this piece. And as that dries, I'm gonna go into the very tops of her eyes and paint a layer of shadow there. Now I've noticed that her eyes aren't quite as shaded as I would like. So I'm not gonna do it across the whole eye, but I'm definitely gonna do it across the top half. And then once that has dried, I can either do another layer on the skin or I can opt to do the hair. I think I'll do another layer on the skin because that's just usually how I, once I kind of decide on what I want my palette to be, that's kind of how I, how I roll. And painting on arches, even if it's just like a scrap of paper like this is really always a pleasure. And no, this is Moulin Du Roy. Who am I? Who am I kidding? I love Moulin Du Roy as well, though. They're both very nice and they handle very similarly. So I do have a tendency of forgetting which one I'm painting on. So apologies. But even just painting on a scrap is kind of a fun challenge because I didn't want to waste the paper. And normally I would use this for like swatches, but it was big enough that I thought I could actually maybe do something with it. This is nice because I don't ever work in this particular format. All right, so on this layer, I'm definitely going to want to do some blending out because there is some stark contrast between our prior layer and what we put down here. I actually like this color a lot better. So I'm just using a thirsty brush, so not even a wet brush. There is some water in it but it's not a wet brush. Just to kind of move the paint a little around a little bit and we'll see how that looks after it dries. So I have a tendency of always overworking my skin. Always, always, always. So what I'm gonna try to do is something a little bit different this time. I'm gonna grab some of that phthalo blue and just kind of use it to finish up my shadows, which I think will work a lot better than going another layer dark with the skin tone. So I'm painting the cast shadows now. So these are gonna have a little bit more of a crisper edge. But since she's in the shadows, I don't want, for the most part, I don't want my shadows to be too defined. I don't want them to be, um, well, it, it's supposed to look like kind of dappled and shady. So we don't want too many harsh shadows. It's actually better to have fewer harsh shadows. But I do want to make sure we get enough of the phthalo blue going on that it does actually look like she's hiding in the foliage. I think that's good. I think we can leave it at that. And I might go a little bit redder with the lips, just a little bit. Don't want her to look like she's been eating like cherries, but Do want it to look like as a tiny living person hiding a little bit in the nose okay i like that i'm going to use the blue again to do a bit of underpainting 
on our hair because we're going to be using like yellow ochre. Yellow ochre tends to be kind of opaque. It doesn't always take glaze as well. The Da Vinci watercolors are surprisingly good about letting you layer them, so that might not even be an issue. Yeah, I like that. Now let that dry and then paint her hair. All right, I am pretty pleased with how this is coming along so far. Isn't that always a good feeling when you can tell it's going to be a nice whatever you're doing? I'm going to do the first layer on her hair. And once I get her kind of blocked in, I'm going to start painting the background. I just, with a lot of the colors I'm going to be using, they have a tendency to read, like regardless of the brand, this isn't like something against Da Vinci. This is just any brand. Thalo blues in general tend to move. Certain types of green have a tendency of moving as well. So what I have found is that if I'm going to be doing something really washy, like with a lot of wash layers, then I should paint that first and then do the heavy painting later. So I'm going to go back in with the blue and just kind of dupe that under her nose. That way we actually get that shadow and then on part of the bridge of her nose just a little bit. And I want her hair to be a bit darker. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to get a yellow ochre kind of started. Yeah, I definitely like that yellow ochre. And I'm glad I did an underglaze because you can still see it but I don't think I could achieve a glaze on top of this without creating mud. And while, you know, we do want some desaturation after all, this is a kid hiding in the foliage. We don't want it to be so desaturated that, you know, we kind of just lose all of our values. Now, despite what I said about not wanting to glaze over this yellow, I am actually doing just that. And actually, it's taking the glaze quite well, so good on you, Da Vinci Paints, for not turning to mud. Also grab a little bit more of the blue for areas that are really in shadow on her skin. I mixed a little bit of burnt sienna in with my yellow ochre, which helps us retain the golden color, but also helps us kind of knock it back into the into the shade and helps us kind of continue to build up tone and then once this is dried i can actually start painting the rest of this piece so i know you guys are excited for that so one of the first things i'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to our beautiful, beautiful phthalo blue, and I'm going to use it to paint the insides of our dew drops, as well as the shadow for the dew drop. And the reason I'm doing it at this stage is because I plan on giving some of these leaves a yellow cast. And I feel like I may not be get a good chance to do what I wanna do if I wait. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a lot of the Da Vinci yellow and just go ahead and get that ready.
And now that I have some of my lighter colors established, I'm gonna go ahead and also establish some of my areas of shadow. And all I'm really doing right now is just kind of marking some of the areas where leaves are overlapping leaves. And I'm just gonna kind of loosely move some of that shade shadow around just to kind of break it up, make it a little more lively. So off camera, I went ahead and added a lot more blue to her hair and a little more yellow to her eyes. I'm kind of debating on how I want to handle the green for the leaves because Thalo plus Da Vinci Yellow makes her a really nice kind of warm green. I'll show you guys my swatch. Like it's really nice, but I don't know if I feel like doing that for every single leaf. I guess I can try. So what that means is that we need to start, I think, probably by having some reservoirs of phthalo and da Vinci yellow. So I'll zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I think what I'm gonna do is start over here. So I'll start with the blue and then I'll work in the yellow. Cause I've had people tell me I should be allowing my colors to mix on the page, which is true, but it's a lot harder for me to control. And since I do these sort of illustrations, control to an extent is important, but when you're not working as tight, you also get these really nice kind of loose gestural paintings that have a little more emotion to them. And I noticed that a lot of what I paint is so tight that it doesn't really have any emotion. So I'm gonna try and work both in and we'll see if I'm successful with that. I think the answer is already not necessarily. I may be drowning out my paints anyway. I mean, at least this will work for kind of a, a base. I mean, I'd probably have to do a second layer of watercolor anyway. So like I kind of figured would happen, they kind of dried a little bit muted, of course, but they also kind of evened out. I mean, these are still really vibrant. They're still drying. Over here though, they're kind of boring, kind of gray green. That's okay. I kind of figured that was gonna happen. I kind of knew I was gonna be repainting these. So I'm not really concerned about that. So I'm gonna try a different technique for allowing your paints to kind of dry or mix on the paper, where we're just gonna paint the blue and then we're gonna go over it with our yellow later. And then over here, it's still really wet. So anything I put down is gonna end up getting diffused. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to do, I think a layer of yellow over it. 
So although the blue is still kind of wet, I think it's time to get some yellow on there and then maybe we can get some on paper mixing going as well. So as you guys can see, Windsor, or not Windsor, Da Vinci yellow is a little bit opaque. So you can kind of use it to also make a bit of green by layering your yellow over your blue. I'm just gonna kind of blend these edges because they're a little bit sharper than I want. Reactivate that blue, get it kind of going into that yellow. I think I'm liking the green I'm getting a lot better now. Mix some of these a little bit better because this is a lot fresher. I hope it dries this way too. And then I'll grab some of the phthalo blue and just kind of mix it in with some of these. Oh, and I need to go back into that one and do some yellow as well. All right, please dry like this. It won't, but I can wish. All right, so the leaves actually dried pretty nice. They're not as muted as I thought they would be, which makes me happy. Now it's time for us to start working on the background. And this is really where we're gonna work on developing contrast and trying to make colors pop. So I want the background to be kind of a deeper blue. So we're gonna be using phthalo blue, but we're also probably going to be using this sort of indigo blue from my core set. And then we're probably going to end up using a little bit of Payne's gray to build up a really nice, dark, rich blue. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a background it's gonna be a lot darker than a wash, but I'm gonna fill the background basically with the phthalo blue. So it'll also give me an opportunity to kind of fill in some of these areas. So I'll start with some of these finer, smaller areas. And then I'll sort of work my way out and I'll just go ahead and do that in time-lapse. So for my next step, what I'm gonna do is a little bit of negative painting. So I want this to appear like she's really surrounded by leaves. So I'm gonna use a darker mix of the phthalo blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to leave these sort of leaf shapes like this. And I'm just going to kind of fill the area with these leaf shapes left in negative. And I'm going to do that in time lapse. Right, so next I'm gonna do a layer with this indigo color. 
and I'm gonna mix a little bit of the phthalo in with it. And I'm gonna work fairly thick with this as well. And what I'm doing on this layer is I'm gonna try to cover even less and sort of leave more leaves. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in time lapse as well. So I think you guys can see how much depth we were able to build by doing this sort of negative painting. Now, the blues are a little bit too bright for what I wanted. So I'm going to possibly ruin this and go in with that phthalo blue and uh, just try to darken them up a little bit. I'm using a really big mop so that can also cause problems. But what I'm basically trying to do is just glaze some color on top of it, not necessarily reactivate all my past layers, although that's probably what's going to happen, and just kind of mute some of these. Now if I have to, I'll repaint my past layers. I think as long as I have kind of a good idea of where they were, I'll be fine. But I do want this to just be a little bit darker because it's just not quite darker than the darkest parts on the leaves. And I want this to kind of push back into the background. because That's really what this exercise is about. Is It's about using cool blues to push things into the background. So that's why we used yellow. That's why we used a mix of blue and yellow together. That's why we put the brightest parts kind of around her face. That's why we use warm colors for her, even though she's receding into the background because we want to we want to pull focus to her. And we want to create kind of this lush, jungle, verdant background. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. And then if I need to kind of reestablish some things, I will. Wouldn't surprise me if so. That's okay. So what I like about that wash I did is it kind of softened everything. So it's a more subtle leafy background, which actually worked really well. I was afraid it was gonna kind of ruin it and just turn everything to mud, but instead it just kind of softened everything. So now I do have the option of going in, tightening things back up if I want to can do that just maybe a couple places but otherwise I really like it as is and I feel like it is really doing the job I had in mind so a few years ago I did a post on the ugly stage every every painting every piece has one um, if you've been painting long enough you kind of don't think about it too much because you you know this is not the final the final product but a lot of less experienced artists artists or people who are picking up a new medium they tend to get bogged down at the ugly stage and that's where they stop and the ugly stage can be a great place for experimentation because if you're going to give up anyway you might as well try something new and that way even if it really is you know not worth pursuing you know, you've learned a new skill or you've found a new way to not invent the light bulb. I think I'm not even going to bother with doing the Payne's Gray. I think this is dark enough. So what I want to do is I want to continue kind of fiddling around with her skin tone just a little bit, um, add some brown to her hair. So just kind of keep finessing this part of it and then I'm gonna allow it to dry overnight. 
and add some details with white gouache and a white watercolor pencil and then maybe even do a little bit of inking on top of it just to kind of pull everything together. This has had a chance to dry out overnight. I am actually really pleased with how it's come so far. So what I'm gonna do, I've allowed my uh, watercolor wells to kind of evaporate a little bit overnight to intensify some of the colors. So for her, I'm just going to add a little bit here and there. But otherwise, I think this is just about done. I know last night I talked about possibly inking it, but I really like it as it is uninked. I feel like there's a nice softness to it that would be lost if I inked it. So I'm going to use a white Derwent Inktense just to add some highlights here and there. And what's nice about Inktense is that with a little bit of water, you can kind of soften that. And I left a lot of the white of the paper, which is good. So really all I'm trying to do is kind of clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit more intentional. I'm also going to use it to put some highlights back into her hair. Just a little bit. I don't want to throw the contrast off too much because we've got something pretty decent going here. And then I'm going to use just a little bit of white gouache. Kind of do the same. And then finally, I'm gonna use the same blue pencil that I'd originally used to sketch this with. And I'm just gonna reinforce her mouth a little bit and her nose a little bit. And I think, I think we're finished. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was a lot of fun. It was fun to take a scrap piece of watercolor paper and actually make something out of it. And it was fun to play around with several different techniques, including allowing our colors to mix onto the paper, as well as negative painting, as well as under glazing in order to get nice, cool shadows that don't completely desaturate the skin. Before we go, I wanted to talk about how using blue and yellow can kind of make foliage either come to the foreground or recede back into the background. When you use warm colors, they typically come closer to the viewer. When you use cool colors, they typically recede away from the viewer. So this can be a really good way to create depth 
in sort of our, a cartoony or a comic form, it's a good shorthand for creating depth. And it can be done with things like cool grays or cooler purples, even cooler reds, depending on, like if you were doing um, yellow, orange, and red, the cool red would be what recedes the most into the background. And I can actually do a demonstration for you guys on those principles next. So keep watching this channel. As always, it was a pleasure to hang out with you guys today. I hope you learned something. I hope I've inspired you to try something that you maybe wouldn't try before. And I hope that through these videos, through these tutorials, um, I've kind of inspired you to love and try watercolor. So hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye guys.